Welcome back, everybody. It's your time to add up on the Edup Experience Podcast, where we make education your business. Dr. Joe Salustio, back with you here on another episode. I'd like to first thank co-founder of the Edup Experience, Elvin Freitas, for reminding me to hit the record button on this episode. Without him, we would be having one heck of a conversation that no one would ever hear. Um, and we don't want to do that because we've got a great guest co-host and a great guest here at Genzabar Jam 2023 in beautiful Orlando, Florida, at the Gaylord Palms Resort. By the way, this hotel is massive and awesome all at the same time. And we've got awesome people representing great companies, great institutions to tell us about the hard work of serving students. I'm going to bring in my guest co-host. He's a first-time guest co-host. Here he is. He's got a one heck of a pocket square on him right now. He's Chris Fortney. He's business development strategist at Spark 451, a Gens of our company. What's going on, Chris? Good morning. Thanks for having me. I, I do like your pocket square. I'm a big pocket square. Thank you very uh, much. Uh, fiend. I would call myself pocket square. I have uh, like 20 of them, 30 of them. I don't wear them that often. But, yeah, I'm you know, a little jealous. You should have told me I should have wore a pocket square. Yeah. Art says the guy wearing a three-piece suit with a tie, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's our guest. You're going to hear it. Here he is. I'm going to bring him in now. He is Dr. Jean Leandre. And he's Dean of Career and Professional Development, Rockland Community College. Dr. Leandre, how are you? I'm doing great. Um, the weather's fantastic, and I'm happy to be here. You are in a three-piece suit, by the way. <laughs> and you're looking, looking very nice today. Um, what's going on? How's this conference been for you the first day you've been here? Uh, what's the what's the environment like? How are you feeling? I, I really, really enjoy the transformative aspect of it all. Everyone here is looking to learn, looking to, to see what they, can, they, they could bring back at their campus or their organizations when it comes to student enrollment and a student success. Let's talk about Rockland Community College a little bit. Set the stage for us. Where is it? Who do you serve? How do you serve them? Oh, yeah. So Rockland Community College is a uh, it, uh, is at a very interesting place. It's uh, in between upstate New York and lower New York, New York City. Um, so it's in Rockland County. It serves about uh, 4,000, uh, 4,500 students. Amazing. Yeah. Um, and and we, we literally are considered the, uh, the transient populations. A lot of individuals live in Rockland County, but they work in New York City. So that brings about a lot of different opportunities, which is we could upskill, reskill, and do a variety of different things that people are actually looking for. Uh, so Rockland C Community College is robust in regards to its academic programs and also its non-credit programs, which started um, under the new, the leadership of Dr. Basson and now is going on under the, uh, the leadership of Dr. Sue Deer. Um, really, one of the main things that we're doing, uh, when I got hired, I was hired as the founding dean of uh, workforce development. And one of the things we were charged with was creating robust workforce programs um, to meet the demands of the employers, but also provide self-sustaining wages for individuals that needed it. So mm. it's exciting place. Nailed it. How are you, uh, Chris, to bring you in? How uh, Spark 451 is obviously supporting the efforts of Rockland Community College. How's, how are you guys working together? Yeah, that's right. Um, so we were fortunate enough to have partnered with Rockland on the undergraduate side to start. Um, and a very talented colleague of John's and friend of mine, friends of Spark 451, um, asked us to come in and, and help him a little bit. And he introduced John and I um, about close to two years ago, I think, yeah. at this point. Mm -hmm. um, John had just started and was very open and transparent and said, I've got this vision, I've got this plan, and I just need some help. <laughs> and, and and Brian tells me you're the guy to do it, so let's let's go do it. How can we make this happen? And so we just sort of hit the ground running and came up with the strategic plan for how we wanted to find and engage these students and, and help them fill his programs. And um, been having great success. Talk about the expansion. How's it been going? You know, you got workforce development programs. The entire workforce development uh, uh, positioning mm -hmm. is important, right? Because we know the value of a degree is in question. We know people are coming in, they're popping out, they're wondering if they should get the full degree, if they should take a non credit course and try it out first. There is some confusion a little bit too. How do you smooth that out and offer programs that are going to be relevant? Yeah, I, I mean, that's a very deep question. Isn't it? Um, I want you to give me a deep answer. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a, a variety of things going on just in higher ed in general. Um, the learner is, is, is not necessarily understanding why you could go to school and not necessarily get a job. Um, so there's a, a, a dynamic shift that's happening. And I think everybody in higher ed needs to understand that. At Rockland, we understood that and we tried to prepare for it. Um, the um, pandemic pushed us to, to be a little bit forward thinking, but I think everybody needs to understand what's the value proposition to getting a degree you think institutions are good at 
saying what the value pro uh, proposition is? Or do you think that's what's got us in this mess in the first place? It's a combination. I think um, uh, pre-COVID, um, we were still trying to figure it out. I think um, post-COVID, we're realizing that um, uh, uh, students, spe specifically adult learners, they want to ensure that if they're going to take something, there's a time limit behind it. There's some skills that are going to be acquired that um, employers actually validate. So I think that's the biggest difference now. You have employers pushing community colleges specifically to say, hey, you have to be the change agent. Within this ecosystem, we're looking for you to actually provide us answers, to provide us employees that understand um, uh, uh, the, the actual occupation that they're going into and could actually make changes as soon as they come in. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Chris, how, marketing's changing, though, isn't it? I mean, it's more personalization, maybe. It's, uh, I don't know, the different expectations of a learner. There's working learners. There's traditional students. There's commuter students. There's, I mean, there's just so many different student types. When you layer on, I can go on ground. I can go hybrid. I can go online. Right. It's just a lot of messaging that needs to be crystallized. Well, so you mentioned something really important there in, in, in personalization. That's always been sort of one of the cornerstones of, of how we approach our marketing at, at Spark 451. Um, Thanks. The, the different student populations, um, you know, that really comes down to our proficiency as marketers to be able to speak to them um, in the right way, to understand our audience, to know how we need to communicate with them, to know what the message that we need to serve them is and identify what platform, what engagement tactic, what tool we're going to be able to reach them. So, you know, we've, we've got this approach, we've got this model for how we want to develop our communications um, and being able to partner someone, uh, partner with someone like John who, who respects our ability to do that and has charged us and trusted us with that opportunity um, kind of allows us to flourish because we want to be successful for him. He believes in us and, and we believe in him and what he's doing. And it's, um, that's, I think, sort of been the, the basis for the success of our partnership is um, you know, that mutual respect and, and understanding that we can help each other um, reach this group and help them benefit. And, and that's sort of, in the end, what we're all trying to do, right, is to help the student benefit and, and have them advance. Um, and we just get to be the people who are, are providing that for them. Uh, Dr. Leandre, as you execute your day-to-day -in -day your role as the Dean of Career and Professional Development, what is that? What's your focus? Is it job placement, you know, getting jobs? Is it employer skills, communicating with curriculum? Is it, talk about what those priorities are for you. Um, it's it's all things. It's interesting that you said that. Um, it's it's all things. It's really just focusing on um, creating curriculum and programs that are validated by employers. I think that's mm. the first thing, right? Um, once we actually have that, how do we go about communicating it to our stakeholders? Um, and that's where Chris and Spark actually comes into play, right? Um, how do you go about communicating it to the students, whether they're high school students, uh, whether they're returning adults or individuals who are unemployed or underemployed? Mm. How do you go about communicating those great programs that you spent um, a tired time with working with faculty and the actual employees to, um, uh, to develop and then market it out to the, the stakeholders? And then last but not least, how do you ensure the individuals that are interested actually um, go from being just interested to leads to actually then stepping inside of your actual classroom? And I think one of the things that I have a lot of respect for um, for Chris and just Spark is, like he mentioned, I had the vision. A lot of us have the vision, but then executing it, um, I was out of my, my, my subject area, you know? So the first conversations that I had with, with Chris was like, hey, look, listen, I have these goals. Um, I did the research in regards to the type of programs that individuals could actually leave here and actually become employed and say that they have self-sustaining wages. How do I do that? Um, and that's the easy part of it. And just a quick note, because um, one of the things that I'm a big believer of is especially the way higher education is now is we have to take a look at our programs to ensure that they're in demand, right? In demand by employers. Because regardless... <laughs> we, we, but, but that's a big moment. Yeah, so that's a big moment button. Yeah, regardless if you get Chris, it doesn't necessarily mean people are, you're going to get butts and seats. So we really, as, as educators, really have to look at the programs that we're offering to ensure that it has the, 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 the actual skills that employers actually need. And then you reach out to a Chris. How do you do that research? You said we, you did the research, know what employers need. You, you know, then you have to market it to the students that you think are going to want to come. What does that research look like? Is it talking to the employers and they say, hey, look, we need more business skills. I'm just making it up, right? 
and you go back and you say, okay, this curriculum needs to change. We need to update it to reflect this. How does that give and take work to get to something valuable? It's a, it's definitely a, a give and take. It's an ecosystem. Um, so the first thing that we did at Rockland is um, we researched maybe about 500 different occupations, right? 500 different occupations, and then we 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 quantified it or um, into uh, what are the priorities, right? You could have 500 occupations that exist within an area of New York, but they're not priority in the Hudson Valley. Right. Once you identify the priorities, it's easy because the employers are actually looking to fill those jobs. So you then bring them in. You do a variety of uh, different focus groups. Um, within those focus groups, you try to identify what are the skills that they're looking for. And now you want to make sure that the skills are, are are outlined within the programs that you're trying to create or the programs that you might have but don't necessarily have those skills. Mm. And that's when, you know, uh, people within the workforce, you, you, you then become kind of the narrator. You talk the language of the faculty and then you talk the language of the employer and you make sure that you create a program that works. True. Talk about distance, right? Community college is important because there is a there's a distance around the community college where typically you're pulling students from. Said the Hudson Valley, geo targeting specific messaging to different ages, right? Community colleges span age, mm -hmm. right? There is it's age agnostic. You could have an 80 year old and an 18 year old all going to school online or hybrid or whatever. How do you find those audiences? It's hard work. Yeah, I think we've been really strategic in our approach that in in understanding how far someone is willing to go um, from their home to get to campus. And especially where we live, understanding that there are so many other options in between there. So if we need to make sure we're managing our budget in a proper way, um, let's think how far is someone willing to drive? For, 40 minutes? Will they go 40 minutes to get from their home to your campus? Within that 40 minute range, is there another option for them there? And if there is, they're probably going to be more inclined to go to the one a little closer to home that's offering a similar degree, maybe at a, a comparable price point or, or you know, similar ROI, whatever it may be, right? So maybe we exclude that zip code and we focus more on the people that are going to have a better, uh, the better chance of converting. And, and those little tweaks are the ones that are going to help us maximize the budget and stretch it a little further and um, really focus on our campaign setup and our back-end targeting. Our digital media team is very proficient at that. They take a lot of pride in their ability to set up these campaigns that are going to perform. Um, and, and we're seeing the results. I mean, we're not just talking the talk where, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding. Um, John has had wonderful success um, and he's got some big goals and we've got some, some numbers to hit and we're just going to buckle down and, and build upon what we've already done and say, okay, how can we do this better? What's the next step for us? Where, where else can we go? What messaging can we tweak um, in our targeting parameters? Where can we grow? What can we do different in these campaigns? Should we consider another platform? How can we stretch this a little further and see what the next step is and 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 try it out and, and optimize and, and continue moving forward? Um, and that's, again, sort of where we've had success because he's willing to let us do that and we're going to figure it out together. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a mutually beneficial but respectful relationship. I had to realize, you know, I got this doctorate degree. I know everything. The first conversation that I had with... Um, with Chris, he started saying some words. I had to tell him, Chris, I, I don't understand any anything that you're talking about. <laughs> Yikes! But what I what I do know is I I I have a lots of love for the community. Um, uh, they actually want these types of programs, the the students and also the employers. How do we go about doing it? And that's when he started talking about all the geometric. What's so what's what's what, whatsoever what the geometrics <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> impressions and, yeah. and all how those many things. leads am I going to get out of yeah, that geometric you know, stuff? And it's it's really working. I'm talking about data. I'm I'm big in data. You know, within the first year, um, being mindful of that, within 12 months, um, we were able to engage uh, 500 learners, and and we completed roughly about 80 percent of those learners, um, and most of them are actually employed. Um, considering just within the first year where we came from, um, uh, uh, you, know, you know, a workforce development area that did not necessarily have anybody enrolled in it. Um, and just being able to do that, fixing the plane while we're flying. So it's not like we had implementation time. Um, so there's two parts at play here. I, I recommend in any college, you first have to do the research. You, you first have to talk to your stakeholders and then reach out to people who are experts and really try to get the learners to come in. Because one thing, as we all know, is people are looking to upskill. People are looking to reskill. People are looking to actually get a quality education that could then um, gain 
get them to be gainfully employed. Let me ask you one quick question, both of you guys, because you're visionaries and you're talking about vision. I want to know what you think about this. Artificial intelligence. Is that on your radar? Uh, yeah, it definitely is. You know, and, and, and you, I have to be honest, um, most of the stuff we use has AI. Um, when you go to well said. yeah, when you go to Google and you're trying to, to to write something out and it automatically shows you what you're writing, that's or if it. you're trying to get around the Gaylord Hotel uh, hotel here to find <laughs> something on the map, yeah. So you're already using it. My my personal belief in it right now is, I think higher ed has to 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 really buckle down um, and again go to the experts and see how you could incorporate it within the curriculum. One thing I would strongly recommend is, is not to be fearful of it because then you're going to end up on the back end of the curve. Nailed it. Mm -hmm. Chris. He's right. I think from my perspective, um, it comes down to how we want to use it. Um, let's consider it a tool and let's consider it another level, leather level lever, excuse me, that we can pull and how we want to leverage it to our advantage. Um, you know, we have a team that does what they do very well with the toolbox in front of them. So this is just another tool in that toolkit. And we want to go ahead and, and utilize it to our advantage and figure out how we can make it work for us. What else do we need to know about Spark 451, Chris, that you'd like to tell the audience? Yeah, um, well, you know, I'd like to say that we're here this year doing something a little different at JAM. Um, Genzabar acquired us about 13, 14 months ago. And last year at JAM was our, our first uh, time at the event as sort of the, the, the shiny new member of the, of the Genzabar family, of the suite of services. Um, and coming into this year, you know, we realized that the typical JAM attendee is very focused on their Genzabar uh, suite of services and tools and products, and they're the users. But we have this opportunity to speak to the enrollment marketing and admissions professionals um, and offer them a little bit of our expertise and the people within our network um, and get them here as thought leaders and experts and, and offer maybe something new to the event. So this is the first year that we're trying Spark Think at JAM which is our session track dedicated to just that. Um, so what I would say um, for anyone interested is look out for 2024 because there's the opportunity for you to come to this conference not as a Genzabar user, but as someone interested in enrollment marketing and admissions and the intersection of marketing and technology. And you can still learn and grow and, and use this as an opportunity to um, bring some great things back to your campus. That's awesome. Uh, Dr. Leandre is a, uh, I'm a SUNY grad, by the way, State, State University of New York College of Oneonta is same, where I graduated. Same here, uh, SUNY uh, Institute of Technology, which is now SUNY IT. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I, I want you to take a moment and uh, wax poetic on what's going on at SUNY Rockland. What should we tell the audience? What do you want us to know? Um, honestly, I think SUNY, SUNY Rockland is, um, you know, in the forefront of just trying to make sure that we, we remain equity focused um, and we try to serve the community that we're in. Um, I have to give a lot of thanks to um, the uh, outstanding faculty because of their flexibility, their subject matter experts. We're always reaching out to ensure that um, we're, we're, we're creating things that has the educational value and also work with the employers to ensure that we could accomplish that. Um, I think within the next um, you know, uh, one to two years, we're, we're getting a new president. I think you're gonna see a, a variety of different things happen and us just trying to, to keep the students um, focused in, in, in the heart of what we do. Love that. Well, gents, our time is at an end. I do wanna give a shout out to Dr. Michael Baston, who we were talking about before. This is his favorite button every time he comes on. Oh, yeah. He likes when I hit that one out for him. Uh, my guest today, uh, by the way, there's been a great conversation because it, it, when we talk about enrollment and marketing challenges, that is the challenge right now is finding students, retaining those students. And we know at community colleges, retention is challenging. And that's where I say the really hard work of retention is done at rich private universities that, you know, you get the 1% retention is a whole different beast than it is somebody that's a $40 bill away from deciding whether they're going to continue with school or not. So I applaud the work you're doing. I, I love the support. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest co-host today, he's Chris Fortney. He's business development strategist at Spark 451 at Jens Bar Company. Chris, did you enjoy your first time guest co-hosting gig over here? I most certainly did. Thank you so much. And our guest today, He's the one and only Dr. Jean Leandre. He's Dean of Career and Professional Development at Rockland Community College, a SUNY College, State University of New York. Jean, did you enjoy your time here? I had a fabulous time. Invite me back anytime. All right. Well, with that, ladies and gentlemen, you've just ed upped. <laughs>